a very scary scenario that could play out in the Gauteng province. Uh, let's start off with you, Peggy, and put it into perspective for us. Are we talking about perhaps 66 cents uh, a, a kilometre uh, that we could see? So it's a new tax that will be implemented, and we're looking at a stretch of around 185 kilometres. That's correct. But I think we need to bear in mind that not everybody is going to be travelling that entire 180 kilometres in one trip. So we need to take it into um, perspective because a lot of the people will be travelling between Johannesburg and Pretoria or between Johannesburg and the East Rand and um, they won't be travelling the entire route. So when we see 66 cents per kilometre and that would be for a normal passenger vehicle, it wouldn't be the cost which would be applied to heavy duty vehicles which are um, going to be substantially more. Um, we need to have a look at the distance that the individuals are going to travel and that would be the impact that it would have on the pocket. Well, Herschel, when this news broke, what was your initial thoughts? I mean, uh, clearly a lot of South Africans becoming very passionate about this and a lot of this also uh, creating a lot of disdain amongst, amongst commuters. Yeah, I think, you know, what, what consumers are feeling and, and my initial views was this is just another indirect tax that government is p imposing on people for services that technically they should be providing. So if you look at uh, um, medical aid, if you look at security, you look at toll roads, a lot of these services are what we're paying our taxes for and our rates and taxes for and we're not getting the service. So that's the initial reaction. But on the other side, good road infrastructure is absolutely critical to the real estate market in general and the preservation of real estate values, especially as cities and towns are growing. Do you think that 66 cents a kilometre is over the top? I know you have done a lot of research, especially in the early 1990s, and you're looking, you were looking back then at a far lesser number. Um, as Herschel said, road infrastructure is very important, but perhaps we need to look at other funding models, and we're also alluding to the fact that we currently have a fuel levy, so surely that money should also be pumped into road infrastructure. Unfortunately, National Treasury has indicated that it is not in favour of ring-fencing any income and the money does go into National Treasury. We had hoped that with the uh, establishment of Sanral that the money that they generated would in fact go back to them, which would mean that that money would be ring-fenced and money coming from the tolls, but that would not impact on the income that would be coming from the fuel levy. Mm -hmm. And for decades now, the business community has lobbied for the fuel tax to be used as Mm. the um, ways and means of providing the road infrastructure. We believe that is an ideal um, user pay system because it's only those that buy the fuel and use the fuel that would be paying the levy. Herschel, let's uh, switch gears a bit and look at uh, the impact it will have on real estate, on property. And one only has to look at the busiest nodes in Johannesburg, yeah. the Santon CBD, uh, the Johannesburg <coughs> CBD, and we see those peripheral places yeah. uh, and a lot of people jump on the highways to get to work. Do you think that that is going to switch a lot of people perhaps looking closer to where they work? So that's the pro of having good roads and, and theoretically a toll system is the better road infrastructure. In fact, from an affordability point of view, it, it enables people to look further and further out of your business nodes and the further you go, the more affordable property is. The challenge here is that if it becomes expensive to then use those roads versus the time that you're gonna spend on the road, it may force people back closer to work because they can't afford the tolls or it's gonna force them so so much further out, they're going to have to find alternative means to come into the nodes like Santon and the Joburg CBD. And that would CBD. naturally then if inflate property prices in these regions because we'll see an increase in demand. Absolutely. So, so you, you know, in your, in your well-established suburbs where there is very little land left, those property prices are going to be dictated by supply and demand, far more affordable in areas like Midrand, but now you've got potentially a significantly increased cost of transport, it may skew the market. And of course, it, it's amazing what will happen to the property prices in Midrand. Mm -hmm. Peggy, I, I, I think there's interject. another side that we need to look at it. If people are not going to be using those toll roads, they're going to be looking for alternative routes, and that's going to put extra pressure on the roads in the suburbs. And that is also going to impact on the property prices in those suburbs that they will be going through as an alternate route. Peggy, I'd also like to look at the multiply effect, the knock-on effect of such a system that if it is put in place, we could see uh, the spending power of the consumer coming under pressure once again. And we've just had some relief where we see uh, 650 basis points off the interest rate environment here in South Africa. We're talking about an interest rate hike towards the end of the year. We've got looming food inflation, so that could be a big concern. What kind of impact are you expecting overall for South Africans? It's 
it's difficult to indicate at this stage what that impact would be because there are so many factors that go into what the inflation rate is. But if you have a look at the way in which our economy is um, set up, there is no product that gets to any shelf without using road in one way or another. And that, of course, is the problem because if you have got your goods coming on road and the roads are told, then the price of every single item that goes onto that supermarket mm -hmm. shelf is going to increase because there is no way that um, the transport operators and the manufacturers are going to be able to absorb that increased cost. Mm. Well, Herschel, let's touch on the, the commercial property side of things. Central <coughs> distribution systems put in place by retailers, they seem to be far out and they're also uh, very strategically based so that they can reach various nodes. If they, it's going to cost more to, to send the goods uh, to uh, you know, their um, supermarkets, do you think we could see a movement of commercial property perhaps closer to the nodes? Uh, you know, how could that play out? I don't think you're going to see a movement closer to the nodes. Once again, it's not only from a central location point of view, but you know, a couple of years ago, setting up a huge distribution centre in Midrand was far more affordable from a land point of view and a building point of view. I don't think we're going to see it moving back into into the main commercial areas again. The challenge, though, is how do the big retailers absorb those costs? Uh, which is unlikely and in all likelihood it's, it's going to be passed on the consumer and I think that's what the consumers are feeling you know with the six and a half uh, 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 six and a half percent drop in rates we've got consumers I think for the first time are finding some breathing yeah. space in terms of disposable income then you've got uh, Eskom now you've got toll roads and yes it is limited to the people that use them but I, I think that South Africans are feeling that perhaps all of the work that was done through the drop in interest rates is now under attack from all other aspects food petrol, toll roads, Eskom, and so wh where's the break coming? Exactly. Herschel, you know, we, we're talking <coughs> about uh, an increase in, in costs and the costs mm. of living here. And we also spoke, uh, you know, about the uh, prices in various nodes perhaps becoming inflated as more demand comes to the fore. But will that demand really come to the fore when you've still got a consumer that is under pressure? And yes, perhaps they want to move closer to work, but it's, uh, it's unaffordable to buy a house because they are still being hit on every aspect. And that's why, so, so you've, you've got to find the balance between the cost of, of commuting and where you're working. And for example, schools. So, you know, schools are becoming a big trend in terms of accessibility where people want to live. But there is no doubt that from an affordability point of view, people are going to have to make some choices now. Time on the road, time commuting, cost of commuting versus can I afford to live near where I work and near where my family goes to school. Well, Peggy, yeah. yeah, I think there is another aspect to it. Um, internationally, they found that where you've got a very good rail service, the property values mm. near to the stations have had an, um, been increased because of the convenience that there are there. And I think linked to the toll roads is the car train. And a lot is going to depend on the cost of using the car train and the safety that is perceived mm. by the commuters who use the car I'm train. I'm so glad you mentioned the car train because that is one of the alternatives that has been put forward by the transport minister. But when you look at the nodes that are available, it's, there's not so many places that you could stop and say, well, this is where I'll leave my vehicle and then I'll jump onto the car train. It's not that efficient as yet and it definitely does not, not span uh, from you know the, the, the end to Pretoria, even going to the likes of Tembisa. So there's a lot of people that are going to be excluded from using mm the public transport system. Uh, when you look at this kind of uh, levy that will be imposed on commuters, uh, if we see a government making good on a more efficient public transport system, would it then make sense to impose 66 cents a litre, or a kilometre rather? I doubt it. <laughs> you hesitated there. I have to be honest, I, have, I doubt it. Um, I, I think the economics have to be looked at. And um, I think a lot of people are prepared to pay for the convenience and for the speed and for not having to worry about connections and that sort of thing. And I think that would really depend on the individual. From a property perspective here, Herschel, as well, where would you be buying property right now, given that this is imminent, it might happen, it might not? Uh, would you be buying property again towards the nodes, towards the CBDs, perhaps where there are very strong transport efficiencies? Listen, as, as alluded to, I mean, you know, in South Africa now, people are starting to realise the closer you are to public transport, as long as it's good public transport, the better. You know, in London, access to tube stations is, is very, very important. The issues, once again, we've highlighted is, is the cost of, of using that transport. But no doubt, over time, nodes like the CBD, Rosebank, which is already elevated in value because of the perception ar around uh, around the, the Gau train, Midrand, all of those areas are going to allow people to to commute, work and 
perhaps not live together where, where property prices are, are impact. But overall, I have to say that good road infrastructure is always positive. The government seems to be doing some sort of so turnaround. So it's almost like you're not worried too much. I mean, we could see an increase as yes. long as it's not, uh, you know, at the level that they're talking about now. Is that what you're alluding to? Because you'd like to see good road infrastructure, but as long mm. as it doesn't impact the consumer that much. Exactly. And I think the government seems to be doing a little bit of a backtracking, which they're very good at in general. They've heard the, the, the noise. They've heard the, the complaints. And let's see what comes out of it. But in the long term, good road in infrastructure is critical for residential values the functioning of the economy for business and all aspects. Okay. And Peggy, you know, you alluded to the fact that it could impact uh, the suburb prices as well because we could see people using alternative routes, which means we'll see congestion there as well. So, uh, you know, very scary because we're painting, uh, you know, the, the, the negatives here. Give yes. us your view on, on some of the positives that could come from this. But I think time is money. And when you're looking at it from a business perspective, provided that the time saving by using the toll roads is, can be balanced against the cost of those toll roads. And if you can get more deliveries done during the course of the day than you can currently with the congestion, then the um, business would be prepared to pay. The problem is that at the moment, we are not taking into account the, um, the hidden costs of using the congested roads. We did a survey not very long ago, or, or a, it, it was a rough calculation, and working on the assumption that there were 90,000 vehicles using the highway between Johannesburg and Pretoria between 8.30 and uh, 6.30 and 8.30 in the mornings, and an average uh, salary of 170 rand per hour, we worked out that the cost to the economy for that two hours was 15 million rand per hour. And that doesn't take into account any of the other costs, the costs of the wear and tear, of the fuel that is being used, of the frustration that people experience and get to the office and therefore their productivity is lower, the added problem of um, any collision that there is there. And those sort of things are not actually taken into account. So I think if you balance the two, you may find that the tolls are not really as bad as they seem on the surface. Mm. We need to do more investigations as to what that total real cost would be. We're looking at astronomical costs here as well. And we've also got, from a commercial property perspective, and shopping centres that perhaps uh, have a lot of easy access to highways. Do you think that those property prices could come down? Do you think less feet uh, will walk into those shopping centres? I'm not sure that you're going to see less feet. It's whether less people are shopping in the mm -hmm. in the centre. But once again, I think good infrastructure makes from the Santon Mall to Midrand to the Centurion Mall far more accessible. So once again, I, I think that it's good for pre property values, residential and commercial. I think that initial shock of, of the potential cost of it, given what you've said around making the right analysis, and I do think that we might see some changes in those numbers based on what we're hearing from the Gauteng government at the moment. Well, uh, Peggy, just to wrap up, do you think this is going to be implemented? It is election year, and this uh, implementation of such a big number per kilometre could uh, perhaps result in some negative views. I think it will be implemented, but probably not at the prices that they are looking at. Um, Sanral has already committed to the cost and they've got loans that have to be repaid. So I don't think we're going to get away from paying a toll. But there is quite a strong possibility that they won't be as high as published.